Chata. Thank you. 
Good morning, students. Good morning, students. Okay. So everyone is in my voice. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So now in today class, we have to discuss with that, uh, what are the data pre-processing tasks? So mainly in the data pre-processing tasks, we have to divide into four types of tasks. We have to perform on data pre-processing. First one is the data cleaning. And the second one is the data integration. Third one is the data reduction. And the fourth one is the data integration, the uh, discretization, data transformation, and data discretization. These are the four types of tasks which must be performed on data people's. Uh, first one, uh, first, uh, already in last class, we have to complete the data cleaning and data integration. Now in today's class, we have to discuss with the data reduction and data transformation and discretization. So here we have to see uh, first one data, uh, third one is the data reduction. In the data reduction techniques can be applied uh, to obtain the reduced representation of the data set that must be much smaller in value. Example, in a particular data set, it considers nearly 1,000 records for the uh, 1 million records we have to consider. It is the, um, it's value amount to that into the uh, smaller value, uh, the smaller value that is we have to using this reduction, uh, data reduction strategies. So these techniques, uh, it closely maintains the integrity of the Original data. So here we can represent it. Um, here uh, the overall view of the uh, overall view of the data reduction strategies are first one is the uh, dimensional reduction, second one is the uh, numerosity reduction, and third one is the data compress. So. So here, uh, data reduction strategies mainly, that is the dimensional reduction, numerosity reduction, and data compression. First one is the dimensional reduction. Dimensional reduction is the process of reducing the number of random variables or attributes under consideration. Uh, who are the unnecessary uh, attributes are there? Unnecessary attributes are there. Those attributes you have to remove. Uh, in dimensionality reduction. So remove the unimportant, remove the unimportant attributes. Or you can use, uh, who are the most uh, um, considerable attributes only we have to consider. So anyway, we have to call, uh, it is the process of reducing the number of random variables or variable attributes under consideration. Dimensionality reduction methods include, uh, so here we have the three types of methods we have to use. First one is the wavelet transforms. Second one is the principal components analysis. Third one is the feature subset selection. Feature subset selection uh, or feature creation. So here first one is the wavelet transform. Uh, in the wavelet transform, uh, the wavelet transform mainly we have to represent a discrete wavelet, a wavelet transform or we call it as DWT. So with that wavelet transform, we have to represent the wavelet coefficients. Okay, uh, this is regarding to that uh, dimensional reduction. In the dimensional reduction, we have to use the three methods, wavelet transforms, principles of component analysis, and future subset selection or future cache. So these are the three methods you have to use for the dimensionality reduction. Mainly in that reduction, uh, the huge volume of data set we have to convert it into 
low value or smaller value data sets. That is simply call it as uh, dimensionality reductions. Uh, first one is a uh, wavelet transforms. In the wavelet transforms, uh, in the wavelet transform, you have to come under this technique. What is the first one? Uh, how can reduce the dimensionality? And uh, what are the techniques we have to use? So here we have to use the three techniques, wave transform, PCA, principal component analysis, and uh, supervised or non-linear non techniques, or future selection, or future creation. Uh, future subset collection, uh, selection, or future creation. Type of techniques are called uh, dimensional reduction techniques. So, why you have to reduce this reduction of the dimensionality? Create the irrelevant features and reduce the noise, reduce time and space required in data mining, allow easier visualization. And the curse of the dimensionality mainly we have to represent, and uh, dimensionality increases, data becomes uh, increasing fast. So, apply the huge volume of data we have to consider. Uh, could not get the uh, 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 you could not uh, retrieve that uh, actual information so that that uh, it takes more time so you have to overcome that problem here you can reduce that data use volume of data uh, by using the uh, data uh, dimensionality reduction that is the first of the dimensional uh, density and its distance between the points uh, critical to the clustering outlay analysis the less meaningful. Uh, the possible combinations of the subspaces will grow exponentially. This is the data reduction, dimensionality reduction. So here in the dimensionality reduction process, first one is the um, wavelet transforms. In the wavelet transforms, we mainly we have to use. Uh, so here we have to use the DWT, discrete wavelet uh, transform, is a linear signal processing technique that are when applied to data to Excel and transform it to the numerically different vector X. So of wavelet coefficients, the two vectors of the same length when applying the, this technique to data reduction, we consider each tuple of n dimension data vector that X equal to uh, X one, X2 and X out here uh, transforms in the diagram should show uh, two types of transforms generally we have to represent it here. Uh, first one is the Fourier transform and second one is the wavelet transform. Uh, in the Fourier, uh, Fourier transform, so that uh, in uh, Fourier transform mainly we have to represent it here. Uh, Uh, so these are based on the frequency and the sine waves. We have to represent these uh, transforms. That is the Fourier transform and the So here, uh, so on radiation purposes, we have to use this transform. So mainly, is a signal uh, frequency subbranch. Different signal frequency subbranch we have decomposed you know, that type of transformation. Actual image you have to convert it into different frequencies. That is called as wavelet transform. It is applicable to the n dimension signals. And the next one is data are transformed to preserve uh, relative uh, relative distance between the objects and at different levels of resolution. Different levels of resolution uh, allow the natural clusters to become more distinguishable. Use it for the image compression. This type of uh, this type of transformation is called wavelet transform. For example, the actual image you have to convert it into uh, different frequency subbands. Um, uh, subbands is called as uh, wavelet transform. So generally, uh, these uh, wavelet transforms you have to use it in image compression in. Uh, uh, the digital image processing. So, the, uh, so this is the cases we have to use in uh, 
wavelet transforms in distant image processing. And so here we have to consider the wavelet transform. Uh, for example, uh, so here you can represent uh, um, two diagrams. Uh, that is the one is the sine wave and the second is the scale wave. So first one we have to take and spell uh, in the discrete uh, wavelet transform. Uh, several plans, some several uh, the, this above the figure shows mainly some wavelet families. Popular wavelet forms uh, include the four and six are applying for the discrete wavelet transform, which is a hierarchical uh, a hierarchical uh, pyramid algorithm uh, holds the data each iteration resulting in the fast uh, computational speed. So here you can represent the method. Here you can represent the method um, as follows. First one is the length L uh, must be integer power of two, padding with the zeros when necessary. Uh, so here the uh, L is always greater than or equal to small n. L is always greater than or equal to small n. That is the first point. And the second second way, second point is each transform has two functions. Uh, how to convert the transform from uh, uh, from one wave to another way, another wave. So here you have to use the two types of functions. One is the smoothing function. And the second one is a difference function. Uh, that is a second uh, second point. And the third uh, third point in the in this method is applies to pairs of the uh, data resulting to set of the data of length L by two. So total length by two that you have to represent it here in the wavelet transform. And the next one final method final point you have to represent applies to two functions recursively until reaches the desired length and also uh, the final last point is select values from the data sets obtained the previous iterations are designated with the wavelet coefficients of the transformed data so this is called as wavelet transform the wavelet transform mainly uh, one uh, one way of the transform um, wave one wave you have to convert it into the another wave. That is simply generally you have to use a distributed transform. Uh, how we have to decompose this uh, wave transform? Now see this example will shows how you have to uh, decompose the wavelet. The uh, wavelets are generally you have to it is the math tool for the space efficient hierarchical decomposition of functions. Uh, by using this wavelet uh, tool. Uh, space uh, space is efficiently we can utilize in the hierarchical decomposition of functions. For example, you have to take the s equal to uh, s equal to uh, that is the value two two zero two two zero uh, two three five four four uh, four. Uh, that is the values are can be transformed into the s uh, in uh, uh, in triangle in the sine wave, you have to represent it. That is the two power three by four minus one by one by four one by two zero zero minus one minus one zero. So these are the sine wave, uh, wave of s. So after compression, you have to getting these values. So now compression many uh, small detail coefficients can be replaced by zeros, and only the significant coefficients are retained. So, for example, you have to consider the resolution uh, 8, the 220235 double, double 4, that is the averages of resolution of 8, uh, eight values, that is the uh, 220235 double 4. Now, in detail, in comp uh, compress the data, detailed coefficients are given below, that is the coefficients are simply you can call it as. Uh, Wavelet coefficients, wavelet detail coefficients, wavelet coefficients are represented. Uh, out of eight, we have to represent it as four. So here, two two is the average. Is what is the average of uh, no, first two values? No, first two values average is two and zero two. This is the here. Uh, 
Uh, see here, uh, this is the actual value, sir. Well, these are the values. Uh, these are the values. Uh, see here, these are the total values are eight values are there. So in out of these eight values, out of these eight values, first two values you have to consider as that average we have to find out that is the two. And the next two values average is one. And the next two values average is four. And next four, uh, next two values average is four. So you have to uh, find the averages for each one. Uh, eight is converted into four. 4 is converted into 2, 2 is converted into 1. So now you have to check it out. Uh, again, uh, this, in these four values, you have to convert it into first two values. You have to uh, divide into, uh, you have to find the average of the 2, comma 3, 2, comma 1, that is the average p by 2, that is the 1 by 1, uh, that is 1.5, that is the 1. one and next two values average is four, four, four plus four by two, that is is four. So again, these uh, two values you have to average, you can find out that is the uh, three by two, three by two by four, that is the two, three by four. So final value, this is the uh, final average value you have to get. So now you can find uh, detailed coefficients for that values. First, we have to consider the zero, zero. Yeah. So for example, here we have to say uh, two, one, two, two, that is the uh, remainder is zero coefficients. And uh, so minus one and detail coefficients value is, this is the value, so we have to represent it as uh, for this wavelet decomposition. Similar way, one, one by two, the values you have to represent it and we have to minus one, one by four. These are the detailed quotients for this wavelet transform. Uh, next, hard wavelet quotients. Hard wavelet quotients mainly you have to represent it here. Hard um, uh, wavelet quotients. First, that is the value is 2.75. That is the coefficient supports. So what the value, what the values are supports? Those values you have to represent it here, 2.75, and uh, is the plus value you have to represent it as minus 1.25. Uh, have to minus value you have. To, then you can add the value that is the point. And so first, what is the value you have to take in? That is the 2.75. So so how we can get this value? Consider here. So this is the values we have to consider. That is the, this is the values we have to consider. That is the 220, 23, 20, 23, and 544. 
So now you have this value, we have to represent it. Now see here, two, two, zero, two, three, five, double four. So now these values we have to, uh, one is the plus, another one is the minus. We have to represent it here. Uh, one is the plus, another one is the minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So two minus two, the value is zero. And zero to, min, uh, zero to minus two, uh, that is you have to find that value. Uh, that is the, always you have to subtract the value. minus value is bigger than small um, plus value. So that is you have to represent it as minus one. And similar way here also, um, minus value is bigger than the uh, positive value. The positive, uh, positive value is always uh, lesser. So that's the reason you have to represent the minus one. Now uh, here also positive value is bigger. That's the value we have to represent it as zero. So here, Oh, these are the values. Now again, you have to subtract these values. Minus value. Minus one, uh, the value is zero minus one. That is the zero minus one. Uh, that is the minus two to minus uh, plus one. Uh, plus one by two, that is the value you have to be getting a point five. You always see here like this. Uh, how we can get this value? I will show you. Uh, so here we have to consider that is the two. This is the two value, and this is the two. Two minus two. The value is zero. Zero by two. Zero by two. Get the value zero. Okay. Next one. 0, uh, 0 and 2, 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, that is the minus 2 by 2, minus 2 by, you have to get, that is the minus 1. Similar way, 3 minus, uh, that is 3 minus 5, that is the minus 2, minus 2 divided by 2, that is the value, we have to get the minus 1. Okay, then 4 minus 0 by zero by two, the value is zero, okay? Then you can uh, subtract the value zero minus, zero minus one, zero minus one, zero, that is the plus one, plus one by two, that you have to represent it as 0.5, okay? Next, minus one, uh, minus one and zero, that is the minus one, zero divided by, Two minus one by two minus one by two that is the minus point zero five minus one by two that is the minus zero point five. So minus one zero that is the minus one by two that is the one point two five. So you get the one point two five value. Then you have to finally you can get that value that is the two point seven five. This is the original frequency distribution in hard wavelet coefficients. So in wavelet transform, why we have to use? Use the hat shape filters, we have to use it here. Emphasize the reason where, where the point cluster uh, suppress the weaker information to their boundaries and uh, effective removal of the outliers, instance two of the noise and instance two of the uh, instance to do noise, instance to do input order, multi-resolution, 
and efficient and only applicable to the low dimensional data. So all the uh, wavelet transforms you have to represent here uh, easily. You can understand the wavelet transform can be applied multi-dimensional data uh, like we have to represent it in data cubes. Okay, clear. Yeah. Uh, next one is another method is uh, another method in dimensional detection is. PCA, principal component analysis. So in the uh, data reduction, mainly we have the three methods. First one is the uh, dimensional reduction, and the second one is the uh, dimensional reduction. Second one is the numerosity reduction, and third one is the data compression. So first one is the dimensional reduction. In the again dimensional reduction, we have to divide into three types. One is the uh, wavelet transforms. And second one is the uh, principal component analysis. And so, uh, third one is the attribute subset selection or attribute uh, creation. So feature creation or feature subset uh, selection, we have to call, any way we have to call. Second one, uh, that is the principal component analysis. In the principal component analysis, mainly we have to discuss, uh, these are the basic procedure must be followed. Uh, first one is the, the input data can, or normalized and uh, so that each attribute falls within the same range. Uh, this step uh, step helps to ensure that attributes with large domains will not be dominate attributes with smaller domains. PCA computes the k orthogonal vectors, k orthogonal vectors that provides the basis of the normalized input data. And the third one is the the principal components of sorted in order decreasing significance or strength uh, because the components are sorted in decreasing order significance. So here the significance is an important, a key important role in principles of component analysis. So see the diagram which shows, uh, find the project that captures the large amount of variation of in data. So the original data is projected on much smaller space resulting in the dimensional detection. You can find the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix and these uh, um, eigenvectors defined in your space. For example, this is the uh, dots are represents the uh, represents the data. All the data, all the data you have to combine or you have to represent it as one cluster that is the uh, that is represented as principal component analysis. So here in this diagram. Mm, that is the Egan vector values. These are the, uh, in middle of the point, we have to represent it as even Egan vector of these values, data values. So that is the E value we have to find out in principles component analysis. That is the PCA. Uh, so what are the steps we have to follow? So here we have to follow these five steps. Uh, first one is the, you have to consider the N data vectors uh, from the N dimensions. Uh, now, first one is the normalize the input data. Second one is the compute the k orthogonal vectors. And third one is the each input data vector in a linear combination of k principal component vectors. And the fourth one is the principal components are sorted in order decreasing the significance of strength. And the last one is the since the components are sorted, the size of the data can be reduced by eliminating the big components. Okay. Uh, so what, uh, here, uh, these all data is works on numeric data only. So these are the five steps you have to follow uh, whenever you are using the principal component analysis in uh, dimensionality reduction. Yeah. So next one is the uh, attribute subset selection, or you have to call it as feature subset selection or feature uh, feature creation. Uh, so here, this is the another way of the reduce the dimensionality reduction, dimensionality of the data. Uh, so here you can use the, based on that uh, attributes, redundant of the attributes, irrelevant attributes. Generally, you have to represent it in a subset selection. Uh, it is a redu uh, redundant of the attributes, first case, and second case is the irrelevant attributes. First case, uh, in a redu uh, redundant attributes, Mainly, you have to represent the uh, duplicate much, uh, much uh, 
duplicate merge or all, all of the information contained in one or more other attributes example uh, purchase the piece of product and the amount of the sales tax paid and the third one is uh, second one is uh, equivalent attributes containing the no information that is used for the data mining task at hand so example uh, students id coupon relevant to the task of uh, predicting students that is the gpa uh so here uh, you can use the another method that is the historic uh, um, uh, uh, greedy method uh, historic search or greedy search we have to anyway we have to call uh, heuristic uh, search or greedy uh, greedy search uh, methods or attribute subset selection or uh, feature subset selection uh, so here you can use there are uh, um so here you have to use the uh, four methods the best historic method subset selection techniques you have to follow uh, first one is the uh, four methods you have to use first one is the stepwise forward selection second one is the stepwise by backward elimination and the combination of forward selection and backward elimination and the final is the decision tree next so here these are the heuristic attribute selection methods uh, first one is the best single attribute under the attribute independence selection uh, significant test stepwise feature selection and stepwise attribute elimination and the final one is the best combined attribute selection and elimination uh, optimal branch and prop so these are these all five steps you have to represent it in four ways well, four uh, four uh, four step by step process i will be, i want to say first one is the step by step forward selection second one is the step by step backward elimination third one is the combination of forward selection and backward elimination and the fourth one is the decision tree index so these are the four uh, step by step process you have to use in a heuristic search in attribute selection or greedy search in attribute selection so here the future generation or attribute creation how you can create the uh, create the attributes uh, that is the feature creation create a new attributes that can be captured the inf uh, important information in a data set more effective than original ones here you can use the three uh, general methods we have to use to for the attribute creation or feature creation first one is the attribute extraction and second one is the mapping data to the new new space and the third one is the attribute construction attribute extraction means uh, what are the attributes you want to specify so you, that is the domain name domain specific mapping data into new space where you have to store the data like fourier transforms fourier transforms manifold approaches you have to use uh, in the uh, attribute creation that is the data reduction um, final one is the attribute construction combining the features of discriminative frequency uh, patterns and data discretization so these are the methods you have to use and these are the methods you have to use for the attribute creation so this is regarding to that dimensional reduction uh, so here you have to use the three types of reduction you have to use the first one is the dimensional reduction second one is the numerosity reduction and next one is the compression so now second one is the numerosity reduction in the numerosity reduction you have to use the two types of methods that is the reduced data values by using the alternative small forms of data representations and uh, uh, pa uh, parametric methods assume the uh, data fits and some model estimate model parameters store only the parameters and discard the data uh, except the uh, possible outliers example uh, log linear models uh, obtain the value of uh, a point m Uh, d space as the product of an appropriate marginal subspace the parametric methods are easily you can represented in regression methods 
So finally, in the numerosity reduction, uh, reduce the data of volumes. Volume wise, you have to reduce here uh, by using the regression and histograms and clustering. We have to represent it here. That is the parametric methods. That means that time you have to use the regression. A non parametric methods, you have to use the not assume the models. Major uh, families, you have to use histograms, clustering, sampling, all these methods you have to use. Uh, parametric uh, uh, data reduction methods, that is the regression or log linear models. So, generally, in the regression means, generally, you have to represent the two types of regressions one is the linear regression, one is the multiple regression. Linear regression means uh, the relationship between the two variables or two attributes you have to represent the linear regression. So the, uh, the relationship between the more than two variables or two attributes are represented as multiple regression. So linear regression, uh, straight line generally you have to represent it uh, one to one. So whereas multiple regression you have to represent it as more than two, that is you have to represent it as uh, y to the model as a linear function to the multi-dimensional feature vector. So log linear vectors, log linear, uh, log linear approximate the discrete and multi-dimensional probability generally you have to use probability distributions you have to use in log linear model. This is the parametric data reduction. So parametric data reduction, uh, mainly you have to represent it these two, linear regression, multiple regression, and log linear model. These are the three methods you have to represent it in parametric methods. And next one is the non-parametric methods we have to represent here. Uh, regression, uh, histogram analysis, that is the, we can represent it as non-linear. Uh, this is the non-parametric method. So in the parametric methods, we have to represent the regression analysis. Uh, what is the regression analysis means? The relation, it is a collective name of the techniques for the modeling and analysis of numerical data consisting of values of the dependent variables or independent variables or response variable measurement. Uh, so these are the, you can call it as uh, uh, dependent variable or predictors, response variable or predictors. The parameters estimated as you've given below best fit for the data. Most commonly best fit is evaluated using the least squared method. So here in this diagram it shows uh, which uh, what are the data lines are uh, placing on a straight line? What are the, how many points are uh, connecting that straight line? That you have to represent the best fit. Okay, that is the regression analysis. In the regression analysis, log linear models. You know that a linear regression, the relationship between the two where two coefficients. That is, you have to represent linear. More than more than two, that is, you have to represent the multiple regression. So log linear models are approximate discrete multi-dimensional probability distributions. We have to represent it in log linear model. So this is regarding to this uh, first one is uh, this is the regression a log linear model. Uh, this is the parametric data reduction. And second one is the non-parametric data reduction. We have to represent it in histogram analysis. Now mainly in the histogram analysis, uh, histogram analysis, we have to represent the divide data into buckets and store the average sum for each bucket. So this is simply called as histogram analysis. The partition rules equal width, equal bucket range, and equal frequency, equal depth also. So actually we have to represent a, a particular uh, uh, bucket you have to represent. So all buckets must be in equal size. So that is equal to 10,000 to 10,000 to 20. Histogram analysis. Uh, in the histogram analysis, mainly we have to represent uh -huh. that data. Uh, equal width uh, divided into buckets, uh, that is the storage average sum you have to represent it here. Yeah. So next one is the clustering. So clustering represents the partition of data set into the clusters based on that similarity 
and the store plus the presentation. So centroid and diameter uh, first thing and it can be very effective that is uh, here. So here in the cluster announcements, whatever the all the data points you have to represent it, you have to touch in the straight lines, that type of low lines you have to represent it in previous method. Uh, I used to gram analysis and uh, regression analysis. But whereas in histogram, so all you have to represent it in equal buckets and the data, uh, whatever the data you have, that you have to average, you have to find out that average value you have to consider. Similar way in a cluster also, you have to consider the, whatever the uh, points you have to come from that, that cluster, that values average you have to represent it in clustering. Uh, sampling methods, so equal number of sizes you have to consider and you have to take the one particular sample that is the thickness sampling method. So the sampling uh, types of uh, sampling we will we'll discuss in next class. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll continue in next class.